Okay, we got some questions to be answered. Um, I'll go through them as best I can here and then post them up to Blackboard. So the first one, um, can you go over fat, milk prep fat? And I guess I was a little, um, a little vague on which one that would be. So it could be either this one. So what's going to happen going through? Where is fat going through? So you've got the adipose tissue and the mammary gland are both making fat. They're going to take the basic building blocks of glucose and acetate. You're going to take acetate, string them together to make fatty acids. You're going to split the glucose in half and make glycerol. And then you put the pieces together to make triglycerides. One glycerol, three fatty acids. You might be talking about this one. Uh, so you have the fat prep side of things. The fats come in. You got the triglycerides. Um, as fats up in this area up here, you're going to have the fat split into fatty acids and glycerol. Glycerol is going to go into the carbohydrate chain and eventually come out at the bottom here as pyruvic acid. You're going to have the fatty acids that are going to go down here, go through what's called beta oxidation, end up down here in two carbon units. We're looking at acetate. Those two carbon units are going to be fed directly into oxidation. So I think that's what you were looking for, but I'm not terribly sure. Go over how and explain how electrolytes help down cows get back to full strength again. So if a cow goes down, they stop eating, they stop drinking. So one of the aspects of that is they get dehydrated. That dehydration is going to make them weak. It's going to make them foggy. It's going to make them not really happy. So electrolytes with water, you need to replace electrolytes as well. Um, so getting that animal upright, getting a rumen in the proper orientation, providing food, electrolytes can come from there. Or you could do an IV if you had to. Um, Get them drinking water. So as the water space is uh, reestablished, we need to make sure the proper balance of electrolytes are in that water as well. So we're looking at isotonic throughout the body. That means a certain amount of electrolytes throughout the body. So as the animal gets rehydrated, um, the water and electrolytes get her uh, water back to full volume. Um, we can um, get that animal possibly up, possibly going again. Can you please go over the blood, how the blood moves from the heart to the liver? So you've got two ways that um, blood is going to get to the liver. You have one entrance here. That's going to be coming out of the heart working its way down the system of arteries and into the liver. So that blood coming in is going to be nutrient poor, but oxygen rich. Blood coming from that same route can go to the entire GI tract, and then the entire GI tract drains through the portal vein into the liver. So this area here is going to be oxygen deficient or oxygen poor because all of the guts have used the oxygen already but it's going to be nutrient rich because of all the nutrients that have been absorbed so you're going to have two parallel capillary beds in the liver one is going to supply oxygen primarily the other is going to supply nutrients so any hepatic cell um, hepatocyte liver cell can pull oxygen from one of the capillary beds and then nutrients from the other and deposit it into kind of the common drainage that all the capillary beds will come 
through and then you're going to have a common exit from the liver. So we think about the gut, the liver, the heart, the body. We've got the portal circulation between um, the gut and the liver here. So that portal vein fits between there. How can you go over how to add hydrogens to the blood? So if you're going to have hydrogens in, increasing the blood, you want to increase your carbon dioxide. That's going to shift everything downhill, and it's going to add more hydrogen ions. Well, actually, both of them, but hydrogen ions is what we care about to the system. So adding more carbon dioxide shifts everything downhill, loads up that system more and more slides so you get bigger and bigger piles at the end of the slide. We can also decrease or remove bicarb and that's going to increase the amount of free hydrogen ions left. So you can increase carbon dioxide or decrease Bicarbonate, it's, got, it's going to leave more free hydrogen ions to influence the liquid pH to decrease the liquid pH as hydrogen ions go up. What organ is most important in metabolism? Well, we could start with the liver, certainly. Um, that's where a lot of the manufacture and um, breakdown of particles are. We call that synthesis and degradation. Um, synthesis to build up, degradation the uh, breakdown. Uh, liver is certainly a possibility there. You could say that, well, without all the contributions of the stomach parts, the small intestine, the large intestines, liver wouldn't have anything to do. You could say that the muscle and the adipose are doing their thing, the mammary gland is doing their thing, but the liver, not necessarily the most important, but the liver is certainly the center of it all. If epinephrine is in the nerves, then why do we give it? What is the reason? So epinephrine, um, part of the sympathetic nervous system, the There will accelerate things, get uh, nerves excited. But that's not a lot of epinephrine. There's not a lot there. Epinephrine and its cousins are also secreted by the adrenal medulla. They're going to be distributed throughout the blood supply. Um, why do we give it? So I'm thinking about EpiPens and things like that. Epinephrine um, during allergic reactions have those issues. Um, you're trying to overcome a flood or a real bad response, so you're going to flood the, um, flood the body with that um, hormone, with that um, activator, as it were. So you're trying to overcome a problem, um, something that's messed up. Um, so the, the reason we give it is your body has gone so far in the direction that we need a whole lot to correct it. Um, we need a whole lot very fast. So it's a you know, function of how many receptors do we have and how many can we activate um, to cause chain reactions to allow us to breathe again, allow the blood to flow where it's supposed to, um, and help us counteract that allergic reaction. So we give it because we have to flood the system. Degradation. Degradation is the breakdown of anything. So if we think about protein, we degrade it to amino acids. We break it apart into individual amino acids. We take those acid, amino acids and degrade them further where we split them into an amino group and the carbon skeleton. Or we take that carbon skeleton and burn it to CO2 and water. All those steps our degradation, all of those steps are catabol catabolic, um, catabolicis maybe, 
Um, so catabolic, we're breaking things down. So degradation is breaking things into smaller parts.